Welcome back to the Art of Video Games with your host Raging Bunny. Today we'll be discussing the art of Dark Souls. Now just a little background on Dark Souls before we get into it. Um, the game itself is a dungeon crawling third person uh, RPG slash action game published by Namco Bandai. The hallmark of this video game is its incredible difficulty which is characterized in the slogan prepare to die. The game itself is based on uh, the high level of challenge, learning from mistakes, and becoming a better problem solver overall throughout the course of the game. Along with the sheer intensity of the game, there is a lot of art that often goes overlooked, such as the story, mood, beautiful environment, and the subtle way the story is told. To break down Dark Souls, we'll start with the story. Minimalism is the key throughout the Dark Souls tale though it's not because of lack of detail or care in creating the story. The game itself is completely unique and not forced. The details in the game are overwhelming and can be discerned through the environment, interactions with other characters, and the endless supply of item descriptions found throughout the world. The narrative itself is dark, overflowing with real world symbolism and extreme relevance. The carefully crafted character dialogue also sets the stage for this dark world. The visuals in Dark Souls are breathtaking. The environments are carefully crafted and stunning. Everything from characters to creatures to the bosses you fight are expertly rendered and quite amazing to look at. In addition, the score of the game is nothing short of amazing and really sets the mood for the story. But to truly get the art of Dark Souls, one must combine the visuals, score, and story for the total effect. These three pieces create what I think is one of the greatest moods in video game history. For example, Firelink Shrine is the game's central hub of activity for the player. Um, it's an area of utter sorrow and hopelessness in the face of the insurmountable odds of the story. This is one of the few areas in the game where the music actually plays. Now, the sound effects in the game are wonderful, but you get this sense of safety and homecoming as you approach Firelink Shrine. The music will play uh, sad and melancholy. The area is decaying, covered in moss and forgotten. The characters you meet throughout the world will return to Firelink Shrine and give you as much aid as they can, but overall the world feels hopeless. And Firelink Shrine does a great job of playing into the game's mechanic of making you feel very, very small. Another area that draws deep emotion is Blight Town. Uh, the feelings of disgust and fear are extremely prevalent in this area. The character will descend many dark holes seemingly leading to the bottom of the earth. Um, there's a lot of darkness in this area, a lot of danger as well, with the inhabitants leading up to the town in the middle of the swamp being poisonous and toxic. The decaying wood planks, the brown muck, and the anthill, the giant anthill of Keelag and her sister really put the player in the area. You can almost smell the putrid landscape of Blight Town. The population has been abandoned, forsaken, and forgotten, and there's really no other better area that evokes the feeling of sheer dread than Blight Town. Another wonderfully crafted area from Dark Souls is Darkroot Garden. Um, the feeling of adventure and naturalism really permeate the scene. The forest is silent and dark. The moon hangs in the sky, and there are endless trees. The feeling of being lost is constantly abound as new players try to navigate through the area. At the midpoint of the game, the character comes to the grand city of Anor Londo. The opening scene, when the character is hefted up from Sen's fortress, is wonderful and jaw-dropping. And again, the musical flourish that plays during this scene does a lot to tell the player that this is a really important area. Anor Londo is larger than life and is really epic. 
Um, the fight with Ornstein and Smo is, quite frankly, one of the most famous video game boss battles of all time. The imagery is very similar to that of a grand Vatican City, and the score, again, does much to really cement just how large this area is. To contrast the city of the gods and Orlando, we have New Londo, which is eerie and quiet, filled with ghosts. The city was sunk after the dark wraiths rose in order to prevent their spread. The only light that leaks through is a lonely beam that shines through the side of the mountain. This area is also home to the abyss, the yawning blackness where the four kings of New Londo reside. There are many more areas of the game that are just wonderful and overflowing with emotion and art, but I could go on forever about them. The final place I'll describe is the Great Kiln, the Kiln of the First Flame, where the player meets Lord Gwyn. Lord Gwyn is the, the primary deity of the Dark Souls universe. He stands for order amidst the crisis that faces the world. As the fire dies out, Lord Gwyn is the last person, the last god to defend it. And it is the decision of the player whether the age of the gods should be continued or the age of man should begin. Lord Gwyn is described as the king of the gods, uh, like a modern day Zeus or Odin. He hurls lightning bolts and his strength is supreme. But after the, the trials and the toughness of Dark Souls, and you finally reach Gwyn in the Great Kiln, you see that it's nothing but a burnout world, wind sweeping over the ashes. It's been a long game, and quite frankly you're tired. And you even get the sense that Gwyn is tired when you meet him. The theme when you fight Gwyn in the kiln is sad. It shows that he's a shell of a god, and it's a fight that at once is hopeful because we've already made it this far, but also hopeless because the question of will anything change after one of us has fallen is asked. Um, this cyclical nature of the game keeps players coming back for more for the new game plus and that actually that element of the story ties well into it being a video game um, personally I put over 200 hours into Dark Souls uh, and getting that much out of a video game is really you know it's getting a lot out of the artwork and it doesn't diminish the story at all it only expands upon it and it's, it's truly a, a work of art in closing, Dark Souls is an all-encompassing piece of art. The gameplay is challenging and fun. The mood of the story is unmatched. The story itself, while hidden, is extremely rewarding. The visuals are beautiful, and the musical score really sets the tone. Overall, this game is wonderful and is a great example of how video games can be wonderful pieces of art. Thank you for listening. This has been The Art of Dark Souls. Stay tuned for my next episode in The Art of Video Game series.